Today was a big day for making merit. We saw a lot of generosity, people giving of their wealth, their time, their energy. People took the precepts. But merit is not complete without meditating. So we now have an hour. Let's try to make the most of it. The word for meditation, bhavana, means to develop. We are to develop good qualities in the mind, which of course means that the mind needs more good qualities. As the Buddha said, as long as you haven't reached the end of suffering, don't be satisfied with your level of skill. See what you can do to learn more. We're practicing mindfulness, alertness, ardency. Trying to bring them all together at the breath. Trying to bring the mind into concentration. But you don't think the word concentration while you're doing this. You think breath. That should be what you're totally interested in. As the Buddha said, you want to see this in and of itself, with no reference to the world. Just the sensation of breathing coming in going out. And make that enough for the mind right now. The mind is hungry. And tends to want to feed in all kinds of places. It nibbles a little bit here, and they say, well, how about over there? How about over there? But the Buddha's image there is of a cow in a, in a meadow. She already has grass and water. But she sees another hill across the ravine that also has grass and water. And she wonders, what's that grass like? What's that water like? So she starts down the hill. But because she's a foolish and inexperienced cow, she gets stuck in the ravine and can't get up the other hill and can't get back to where she originally was. In other words, as you're practicing concentration, don't let yourself get waylaid by other thoughts about what might be a nicer place to be. This is the place you want to be right now. Make the most of what you got right here. It's the breath coming in, the breath going out. All the different breath energies in the body are here right now. Are you here for them? In other words, to what extent can you sense breath energy in the body? And to what extent can you see if it's uncoordinated? And now we can get it back into coordination so that all the breath energies seem to be flowing together, helping one another along. Thinking about how good the breath energy is for you, why you would want to maximize the sense of comfort and the well being right here. Not only for the pleasure that it gives you right now, but also for the benefits it's going to give to the body. And when the body benefits, it's easier for the mind. But you want this to be the total world of your interest right now, the body as you feel it from within. On the night of his awakening, this is where the Buddha placed his interest. After ranging around previous lifetimes, seeing all the beings in the universe, dying and being reborn in love with the karma, he realized the best used to make of all that extensive knowledge is to bring it back into the present moment. What were his attentions right now? What were his views right now? And he anchored the mind with a breath. And then from the breath he was able to see his intentions clearly. As soon as they moved away from the breath, he would know. The mind needs something like this a frame of reference, so that when it moves, you can see it move relative to the frame. If your frame was moving all around, then it's very, very easy for the mind to slip in some extraneous movements and then suddenly be off. Ha! 
hopping from one train of thought to another to another like a hobo. So you want to be right here, anchored. And ask yourself, how can you give us rise to a sense of fullness? What are the parts of the body that feel empty right now, that could use some felt fullness, or they feel depleted, that could use some energy, yeah, especially after a day of work like this? What can you do to energize the body, to feel refreshed? What parts of the body right now are feeling frazzled, tired? Think of the breath energy going right there. It might be your eyes. Think of the breath coming in and out the eyes. It might be in the area around the heart. Wherever the body is feeling frazzled, allow that part of the body to be nourished with the breath. And as you do that, the mind will get concentrated naturally without you having to think about concentration. This is a passage where the Buddha mentions that when he was a young boy, he spontaneously got into the first jhana, sitting under a tree. And he probably wasn't thinking jhana, and at that point might not even been intending to get the mind into concentration. He just got really interested in his breath. So he wasn't having to think of all the different factors of John. He was just getting really, really interested in the breath and sticking with it and watching it, evaluating it, seeing what kind of breathing felt good. And when you do that much, you've got all the factors of jhana there. Just simply maintain them so they're steady. Watch out for the part of the mind that wants some variety and wants something new. Say, okay, we've seen that, we've seen a couple good breaths, breaths coming in going out. What's next? That's the part of the mind that you've just got to let go of. If you think of the breath as a medicine, it's like a cream you put on your skin. You don't put it on and then wipe it off. You put it on, you let it stay there. The longer it stays there, the more it can seep in. The more the mind stays with the breath, the more the breath seeps into the body, the mind seeps into the body until everything becomes one. The breath fills the body. Your awareness fills the body. A sense of well-being fills the body. And then try to stay balanced right there. And don't ask where this is going. As soon as you think about where is it going, you start pushing into the future. then you'd lose your balance. You want to stay upright here in the present. And what you've got right here, right now, is enough to give the mind some rest, to give the mind some energy. In Thailand, when they talk about making merit, and John Fung used to like to ask people, where is your merit? Well, the merit is in the mind. We make merit through generosity, we make merit through virtue. But what we're doing is developing good qualities in the mind. And as we're meditating, we're focusing more and more directly on the mind. With generosity, you're thinking about this person, that person, what object you want to give. With virtue, you've got to think about your dealings with other people. But when you're dealing here with meditation, it's exclusively the mind dealing with itself. You're taking on the big issue directly instead of indirectly. I mean, it's good to have those indirect ways, because they develop a lot of good qualities in the mind. But then those good qualities in the mind really pay off as you're meditating. You realize that it is possible just sitting here, breathing, 
to develop a sense of well-being. And then you can ask yourself, why don't I do more of this? Now, in some cases, it may be because of pressing responsibilities outside. But there are a lot of other times when you have free time in the mind and you don't make the most of it. If you really want to get good at the meditation, try to stuff the meditation into all of those little empty spaces. Because after all, wherever you go, the breath is right there. That way you can tap into the sense of well-being whenever you need it. The mind gets developed. So, as the Buddha says, the mind and the body get developed together. And his meaning of that term is that you get so that you're not overwhelmed by pleasure, you're not overwhelmed by pain. And concentration helps you with both of those things. When you focus in on the breath and you realize there are pains in different parts of the body. But you make up your mind you've got to stay with the breath and make some parts of the body at least comfortable. That's your skill in learning how not to be overcome by pain. Otherwise people sit here and all of a sudden they see a pain here and a pain there. So I can't stay in the present moment, it's uncomfortable, and they leave. That's overwhelmed by pain. But here we say we can work around it. We're not afraid of it. It doesn't become our sole preoccupation. Similarly with pleasure. As you focus with the breath, work with, work with the breath through the body. A feeling of well-being comes up. And some people will leave the breath and just wallow in the well-being. And either they lose concentration or else they go into a state called delusion concentration, where the mind is still. And it's pleasant, but very unfocused and very unalert. And why is that? Because you drop the perception of the breath. You were overcome by pleasure. What we're trying to do here is to give rise to that sense of pleasure, let it spread through the body, nourish the body, benefit the body, but keep anchored with the breath. The pleasure will do its work. The sense of fullness will do its work. You don't have to go wallowing in it to get the most out of it. Just make sure that you stick with the breath coming in, the breath going out. Even if the breath seems to stop, stay with the idea of breath energy filling the body. And that way you become developed both in body and in mind. So when the Buddha talks about developing, these are some of the things he means by you're getting developed in your dealings with pleasure and pain, so that you can learn how to use them. They don't drive you around. In John Lee's comment, he says, learn to see pleasure and pain as words that people speak in jest. In other words, they're not that important, but they are useful as tools. Don't make them ends in and of themselves. Otherwise, it's like having a hammer and bowing down to the hammer and putting the hammer up on the altar. And letting the hammer rule your life. And forgetting that it's basically a tool. Pain is a tool. Pleasure is a tool. Pain is, gives us our opportunity to understand how the mind can pain itself over unpleasant things coming in through the senses. You learn to watch the mind as it deals with physical pain, and you begin to see how it creates a lot of unnecessary mental pain around it. And that way the pain becomes a tool for understanding your mind. The pleasure is a tool for giving the mind energy so it can keep up its work.
we don't running, go running for pleasures for their own sake. There's one pleasure we go for for its own sake, and that's nirvana. Everything else has to be viewed as a means, as a tool. So when the pleasure comes up in the meditation, you don't simply satisfy yourself with it. You ask yourself, what's the best use of this? And here you use it to get the body refreshed, to get the body energized. So you're in a better and better position to actually do the work that needs to be done to understand your mind. So when we talk about developing the mind, this is how it gets developed. So it's no longer a slave to pleasures and pains. It can't be pushed around by pleasures and pains. People can't use our pleasures and pains to make us fear and do what they want. And that way, as the mind gets more and more developed, it becomes more and more free. And that's what we're after. That's what merit is for. To free the mind of its bad habits. And give us something solid in return. 